guys, happy Friday. Welcome back to the Q&A. Today I'm gonna to be talking about um, a topic that I get many questions on, which is what to do about broken blood vessels on the face and um, a dilated uh, telangiectasias, those little, what you guys refer to as broken capillaries. They tend to occur around the nose and on the face. I get a lot of questions about this, so I thought today I would address this topic. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I'm a dermatologist, and I film um, fun vlogs here on my YouTube channel, as well as a lot of skincare Q&As and skincare product reviews. I talk about skincare procedures. Um, so if this type of content is of interest to you, then I encourage you to subscribe and stick around for all of the fun. Um, but with that, let's get started. So blood vessels on the face are referred to as telangiectasias. They're actually quite common and they tend to occur around the nose. They're really um, offshoots, if you will, of some of the bigger arteries that perfuse or bring oxygen and blood to the face. Um, that's why they tend to be around the nose, you know, sometimes around the cheeks, areas where there's a higher density of blood vessels. <clears throat> And um, they're not broken, actually. What they are are just kind of offshoots of, of the main vessel that is down deeper. And the reason you see them and the reason they're so prominent is that they're very superficial on the skin as opposed to the, the main vessel that's down deep doing most of the work in, in terms of bringing blood flow to your face. Um, but occasionally, and, and not, not, not uncommonly so, little, little baby shoots and sprouts can, can sprout out kind of like a potato, you know, when it sprouts those little things. Blood vessels can sort of do the same thing and make little baby tiny blood vessels that pop up close to the surface of the skin. And so why do they occur? Well, they tend to happen more so as we get a little bit older, but they can really happen in our younger years as well. And, um, it, you know, it's a variety, many, many factors play a role here, okay? So as we get older, <clears throat> the underlying collagen framework of our skin starts to break down, just related to um, cumulative sun exposure throughout our life, as well as expected age-related changes in the deeper layers of our skin. And as that deeper collagen framework is, is kind of breaking down and, and becoming altered, that um, support is no longer there and now some of these blood vessels become a little bit more prominent appearing to the eye. Furthermore, uh, any sort of sun damage on the face that you know accumulates over our lifetime also will exacerbate the appearance of these little blood vessels. People who have a personal history of like asthma, seasonal allergies, really sensitive, irritated skin, you know, you go out in the springtime and pollen is just not your friend. Um, oftentimes these folks are a little bit more predisposed to getting more prominent capillaries on the face, just kind of from chronic irritation um, and, you know, rubbing of the skin perhaps, as well as, uh, you know, just inflammation in the skin that can bring about some of the growth factors that promote a little bit of this sprouty blood vessel growth, if you will. And then the other group who, who really is uh, plagued with little blood vessels on the, on the face are folks with rosacea, okay? I have a whole Q&A on rosacea, um, and I'd like to do some more rosacea Q&As uh, sometime this year. I don't know exactly when. Rosacea is a skin disease in which individuals have, for whatever reason, a hypersensitivity in the skin of the face to otherwise innocuous stimuli that come in contact with the skin, like, you know, your face washes, very, very sensitive skin. And their skin responds by flushing and turning red, okay, as well as stinging and burning sensations. And um, <clears throat> there's a lot of inflammation in the skin of rosacea when that occurs. That inflammation brings in little growth factors that kind of contribute to some of the, uh, the redness. And those same little growth factors can lend themselves to sprouting of blood vessels that with each flare of rosacea can become more likely to form and, and more likely to be persistent, okay? So people with rosacea um, are at risk for developing um, little blood vessels on the face. It's not uncommon to develop little uh, broken capillaries and blood vessels on the face uh, during pregnancy uh, because during pregnancy, the growth factors for <laughs> blood vessel formation, appropriately so, are amped up. And so, you know, sometimes that appears on, on the mother's face. And of course, <laughs> who would we be without our genetics? So genetics certainly plays a role in your risk of developing these little blood vessels 
Um, you know, as we get older, the subcutaneous fat tissue in our skin starts to, we start to lose that. Um, it goes other places, but uh, our face, it, it, it migrates away from there. That's kind of why, you know, uh, uh, the aging face has um, some changes related to fat loss. And uh, one such change related to fat loss is actually more prominent appearing little blood vessels in the face because they no longer have that kind of supportive fatty um, tissue around them to, to kind of make a little bed for them and, and hide them in the skin. So they become a little bit more noticeable. And, you know, and people who um, have a tendency towards blushing and, and flushing kind of sort of in the same family of rosacea, right? If you turn red easily, your face turns red, um, that, that persistent increase in, in blood, um, blood flow to the face, you know, sometimes can uh, encourage a little blood vessel growth as well. So I think it's a common misconception, however, you know, I got a lot of comments in a lot of my different tips videos and like my tretinoin videos, like do um, topical retinoids cause broken capillaries in the skin? No, they don't actually. Um, but what I, it is, is, plausible and what I suppose could occur is that if you are excessively irritated from topical application of whether it be tretinoin or any anything that you're using on your face, any product, if it is causing irritation in the skin, chronic irritation brings an in inflammation into the skin, subsequent growth factors that you know could lead to blood vessel um, formation. But um, tretinoin and differin do not cause do not cause blood vessel growth in the face or, you know, quote, broken blood vessels, telangiectasias. And another group of folks who will be plagued by, um, prominent little capillaries, telangiectasias on the face as well as on the body are people who, um, who have liver disease, like, like really profound liver disease, you know, end stage liver disease, um, are oftentimes one of the skin manifestations of end stage liver disease is what is what are called spider telangiectasias, or little blood vessels kind of scattered all about. Um, and that is actually a skin manifestation of an, an internal disease. But what can you do to prevent them, okay? <laughs> Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot um, outside of what every Q&A will tell you to do. Every single one of my Q&As almost, I feel as though, which is great, it's kind of my agenda here, is to tell you that really the best thing to do is sun protection, guys. I mean, honestly, sun-related changes in the skin, atrophy, damage, uh, you know, increased redness, increased inflammation, destroying that supportive collagen framework, all from ultraviolet light, Another reason, if, if you if you were on the fence, yet another reason to wear sunscreen, guys, is is uh, to you know protect yourself against the risk of developing these. Sunscreens, broad spectrum, SPF 30 to 50. Higher is not better, okay? Just 30 to 50. Shoot for that range. Um, you know, apply to the face, the neck every two hours while you're outdoors and periodically throughout the day. That is important for overall skin health. Uh, telangiectasias on the face are an example of, of why it's needed, <laughs> one of many. So definitely, um, you know, don't neglect sunscreen. Don't neglect, you know, the broad brimmed hat, sunglasses. Just protect your skin from ultraviolet light. Don't be, um, uh, cavalier when going outdoors and you know crossing the parking lot. Ultraviolet light reflects off of the surfaces of cars, off of the surfaces of asphalt. So not all sun protective measures on their own are enough, okay? Sun um, reflects off of the ground. So if you're just wearing a hat, it's still going to reach the underside of your face, the lower half of your face and still put you at risk there, okay? So be really protective of your skin from ultraviolet light. I cannot overemphasize that enough. Um, and and telangiectasias on the face are yet another example of why you need it. The other thing that you can do, if you, particularly if you are somebody who has rosacea, is to make sure that you have a good understanding of things that make your skin red, okay? And for people with rosacea, it tends to be one of the main things that causes increased redness or 
uh, brings brings flushing to the face is drinking hot liquids or you know the rise in body temperature that occurs like when we work out or something okay if you drink hot coffee in the morning uh, as as I do, <laughs> you may notice that your rosacea gets, a, you get a little rosacea flare, okay? And so one of the things that you can do to to help counterbalance that is don't, don't go giving up coffee. The world doesn't need, need that kind of crime in it. Um, what you can do instead, however, is get yourself a cold um, neck cloth, okay, and put it around your neck or an ice pack. And um, when you when you take a sip of the hot coffee, that can counterbalance the rise in body temperature to your face and help kind of lessen that uh, that response a little bit. Likewise, when you go to the gym when you're working out, don't don't not work out because of rosacea. That that should not occur. What you should do instead is bring some ice cold water and as you're working out, put a few ice chips in your mouth and just let them dissolve there or some ice cold water and that likewise can um, counterbalance that rise in body temperature to your face and really help a lot. Having a really minimalistic skincare routine is another practical approach to uh, ward off these little little friends. I mean, the less the, the less stuff you put on your face, the better off you are. I mean, you know, don't go putting all of these essential oils and botanicals and, and things that belong on a, a salad bar and in, in a garden, <laughs> the Garden of Eden on your face, okay? The skin's gonna react to that by, by causing redness and persistent redness brings in those growth factors for, for blood vessel growth, leads to telangiectasia. So minimize your skincare, all right? Minimalistic skincare focused on sunscreen, a gentle moisturizer, not a lot of serums, toners, essences, all of that stuff. Just stop doing that. <laughs> Less is definitely more and blood vessel growth in the face is yet another example of why you should go minimalist with your skincare routine. One other point about rosacea too, you know, there are some newer drugs for folks with rosacea like Mervazo or Rofade that are intended to be taken um, when you're about to have a, a flushing or when your face is red. And the way these work is they um, get rid of the redness, um, but they get rid of the redness for a short period of time, okay? So you may be wondering like, are those good to potentially prevent the the little blood vessels from from forming the telangiectasias and i would say no not necessarily because what can happen with those medications is that they really only work for a short time right they're kind of intended for you to use right before you go out to an event or something and you don't want to be red okay but if you use them enough there is a risk of what's called rebound redness where after you know uh the skin responds by by getting even redder after after the drug has worn off so I wouldn't say those those are the go-to, but if you have rosacea, <clears throat> not only identifying and, and avoiding those triggers for your rosacea, that, that's key, but the other key is to make sure you're following up with your dermatologist regularly because there are quite a spectrum of treatments for rosacea outside of, you know, Merveso and Rofade. But using your rosacea medications consistently along with your treating dermatologist um, can kind of ensure or help you stay away from that path of, of developing persistent telangiectasias on the face. So, but if you have persistent telangiectasias on the face and, and blood vessels on the face, what can be done about them? Well, usually it is a laser called the V-beam or the vascular laser. It is a pulse dye laser. And the way that this works is it targets the um, a blood vessel specifically, okay, and ignores everybody else in your skin, okay? It's very important that the appropriate wavelength be used as far as the laser, um, but a vascular laser can target these little blood vessels um, that lie up, up top to the skin. And what it does is it kind of, it kind of burns it a little bit on the, from the inside causes it to, the blood inside of it, to coagulate, okay, to form like a little clot, and the blood vessel to kind of shrink up, and then your immune system comes in and says, oh, okay, well, 
let, let's make a funeral for this and carries it away and it gets resorbed by the body and goes away okay um, I got some questions in my laser video like how exactly can laser work for broken blood vessels or telangiectasias on the face that doesn't make sense that's how it that's how it does it okay it, it coagulates it coagulates the little blood vessel the blood vessel dies it's not it's not a critical little blood vessel okay it's not critical for perfusing your face it's just an offshoot yeah, I mean, think of it sort of like lawn care, right? You, you can you can trim a, a few branches off of your tree, but the whole tree is not going to die. That's similar to how laser targets telangiectasias. A telangiectasia is like like a little branch that doesn't quite look right off of a main main trunk, okay? And so you trim it off and throw it throw it in the composting pile and that is it and the trimming off and compost pile that's the vascular laser that uh, can be performed by a, by a dermatologist it is considered a cosmetic procedure um, but you know if you got one or two of them it's really not oftentimes that that expensive out of pocket to be honest with you as far as cosmetic procedures go um, and the, the laser procedure takes about 20 minutes. You usually need about three to five treatments just to ensure that that little blood vessel is kind of adequately targeted and goes away minimizing bruising around the face. Um, so that's usually what, what to expect. And even with the laser though, it can be hard to get rid of them permanently. They sometimes can come back. So do know that, that sometimes the laser doesn't work um, 100%, okay? So be aware of that. You'll see lots of ads for vitamin K creams to take care of these little telangiectasias, and those don't work for telangiectasias, so don't waste your money on those. Vitamin K is a fat-soluble vitamin that you know people with liver disease actually have to take, and um, a topical vitamin K has been shown actually to be helpful in um, in in, in uh, bruising, um, specifically in bruising that occurs after cosmetic procedures. Sometimes, you know, a lot of cosmetic procedures, uh, an unfortunate little uh, side effect of them is, is they cause a bruise, okay? And so physicians don't like to bruise their patients and they, they like to make that go away as fast as possible. And we have some studies to show that if a vitamin K cream is put on around the time of the procedure, um, that those individuals will have a bruise for a shorter number of days. But the same does not hold true with telangiectasias or blood vessels in, that you see with your eyes and the skin, okay? They are not the same thing, and that just doesn't make any sense that that would work, nor does it. So don't waste your money on that. Save it up and, um, you know, consider the laser treatment if, if you're really bothered by them. But uh, be proactive about preventing more from coming. Hopefully some of the tips that I gave you in this video are helpful. I know it can be incredibly uh, frustrating to have something like this on your skin, so um, you know, do see a dermatologist um, to, to to consider getting it treated if it if it really bothers you and is you know keeping you from doing the things that you you want to do. Um, but anyways, guys, I hope this video was helpful to you um, and that you liked it. If you have any questions about lasers, make sure you check out my laser video that I posted a few weeks back. Um, I'll list it down below in the description box for you guys. Um, but yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye!